well, the courageous resistance of the anti-war left in Russia is a remarkable example of what the human spirit can achieve even under the harsh rule of today's brutal Russian dictatorship. It's an inspiration to all of us, a beacon of light in dark times. Well, I wouldn't presume to guess what's in the minds of Putin and the small circle of hard men around him. What we do know is that for 30 years, the most respected members of the US diplomatic service, uh, major government advisors, have been issuing sharp warnings to the government, US government, that it is reckless and dangerous to ignore the red lines that Russian leaders have established back to Yeltsin and since uh, no NATO membership for Georgia and Ukraine. Well, perhaps that was the concern of Putin and his circle, perhaps not. Uh, for now, we can only speculate. What I would say to people who are inclined to support the war on any grounds is that there's no possible justification for this vicious aggression. Um, I should add that this particular justification, effort at justification, uh, uh, makes no sense at all. Uh, the invasion of Ukraine was criminal act, it ranks alongside the crimes for which Nazis were hanged at Nuremberg. But quite apart from being uh, criminal, it's also totally foolish. It had a per perfectly predictable effect, namely to increase US global power, which is exactly what it did. Handed Europe over to the United States on a silver platter, Washington's fondest dream. So if the goal was to harm US global dominance, it was idiotic. And of course it had exactly the opposite effect. Uh, if there had been anyone in the Kremlin who resembled a statesman, uh, they would have done something quite different. They would have sought to bring Germany and France into an accommodation with Russia in something like what Gorbachev called a common, uh, common European common home, no military alliances, actually something like the partnership for peace that the US government had sponsored in the early 90s uh, before President Clinton expanded NATO, wrecking those hopes. Uh, that would have been the sensible thing for a Russian government to have done, and it might well have succeeded. Uh, Europe would derive many commercial and security advances by uh, advantages by accommodation with Russia. There were some tentative initiatives by Macron. Uh, these were rebuffed by Putin, who preferred violence and greatly enhancing US global dominance. Uh, we can see it in retrospect, was obvious in advance. The neoliberal, neoliberalism, which was in fact a form of class war, is tottering as the result of uh, what it has inflicted on the population of the world. It's tottering, it's not fallen. The small 
the small circles that have greatly benefited from the neoliberal assault are making every effort to hold on to their power. That's going to be a struggle and a significant one. But as a matter of fact, it's a secondary concern. The primary concern is that the human species is hurtling towards disaster by destruction of the environment. For humanity as a whole, the most catastrophic effect of Putin's criminal aggression is to reverse the efforts to end the use of fossil fuels. That's a necessity for survival of organized human society. It's been sharply reversed as a result of the invasion of Ukraine. There is a narrow window in which we can take action to avert this catastrophe. The narrow window has been closed further by the invasion of Ukraine. Unless we act effectively and quickly to overcome this crisis, it's not going to matter what kind of world order emerges. It'll be disastrous, so disastrous that we don't want to contemplate it. Well, there is time. There are many people, mostly young people, all over the world dedicated to this necessary struggle. They have to work together in solidarity all over the world, forgetting borders. They don't matter for this struggle. The struggle can succeed, but not without dedication, mutual support. And to repeat what I said at the beginning, for this struggle, the courageous resistance of the Russian anti-war left is a true inspiration. We are, all of humanity is facing extremely serious dangers. The invasion of Ukraine has of course been catastrophic for the people of Ukraine who are struggling courageously to resist. Fortunately, there's an important force within Russia which is standing up to oppose the violence of the state under extremely harsh conditions. This is a remarkable event. Uh, the apart from Ukraine itself, the invasion has significantly race, raised the threat of nuclear war which is a terminal war, we're finished. There's no escape from a nuclear war among major powers. It has also reversed the limited efforts, much too limited efforts to address the crisis of global warming. Those have been reversed. We don't have a lot of time. There's a small window. This has shortened the time available we have to work effectively, courageously, in solidarity, in mutual support, forgetting borders, they don't matter. This is a global crisis and there is a chance to uh, ensure that organized human society can survive. And in fact, it will be a better world. There's a chance, it's a, narrow chance and it's narrowing. We don't have time to waste.